Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's the first of two episodes in which I'm going to build a silent PC based upon this ASRock Mini ITX motherboard with an embedded J4105 processor. So let's go and get started. Right. Here we have our ASRock motherboard, which has got a mini ITX form factor. And this means that the motherboard inside this box is only 17 centimeters or 6.7 inches square. PC motherboards of this size were first developed by VIA in 2001. And today they're often referred to simply as ITX. However, even smaller Nano, Pico and mobile ITX motherboards also exist, so calling a board just ITX can be confusing. It's also worth noting that while some mini ITX motherboards have a socket into which a processor needs to be fitted, others have a processor pre-installed. And this board is one of those with an integrated processor, which here is a quad-core Intel Celeron J4105. We probably guessed that from the name of the board. And this has got a base frequency of 1.5 gigahertz, bursting to 2.5. And we've also here on this board got integrated Intel 600 UHD graphics supporting 4K output at up to 60 frames a second. I purchased this board in September 2020 from Amazon Co UK for £97.79 and at the same time it was selling for about $99 on Amazon.com. Do note though, you often have to shop around to get a good price on a mini ITX motherboard like this with an integrated processor. Anyway, after all that, let's get inside. I think there's just a thing to cut there. There there is. Stanley, the knife will go through that straight like that. And we can get inside. I always love opening up motherboards, the heart of computing. Oh, here we are. We've got a manual. We've got the uh, I.O. plate for the back. We've got some cardboard wrapping there. We've got some SATA cables. And we've got the board itself in a down there on the floor, anti-static bag. Is it sealed? No, it's not sealed. We can go straight in. Here we are. Here is our lovely newer mini ITX motherboard. It really is so exciting to be looking at a new motherboard. On top of the board, the first thing to catch our eye is the heatsink sitting on top of the integrated processor. This is a passively cooled board, so we just have a heatsink. There's no fan here. This is why we can build a lovely silent PC. And alongside the processor and its heatsink, we've got these two slots to take memory. And these are SODIMM slots, small outline dual inline memory module slots. Not the DIMM slots you normally see on a PC motherboard. These are the sort of slots you normally get in a laptop, but you often get these sort of slots on a mini ITX motherboard, particularly those with an integrated processor. And these will take DDR4 SODIMM modules. Beneath one of the sodium slots, as you can see, we've got a bevy of connectors. We've got a header for a COM port, and we've got two headers for USB 2 ports. We can add three USB 2 ports to these headers, and we've also got a header for two USB 3 ports. At least it's labeled USB 3 here, but the manual for the motherboard tells us it's a USB 3.1. We've also got a PCIe slot here. This is PCIe 2.0 times 1. That might be useful in some build, although I won't be using it here. And then we've also got four SATA 3 ports, which we certainly will be using to connect a drive to this system. And having these four SATA connectors on this small board means it's a great board to choose if you want to build a small NAS or a small server. Although here, I'll be using this board to build a more general purpose and media PC. Rotating around on the next edge, we find a connector for a case fan. We won't be using that, but you can have a case fan connected to this board if you wish to. And then we've got various connectors here for the front panel to connect in the front panel switches and LEDs, a speaker, things like that. And then we've got a UART connector here. And finally, a 24 pin standard ATX power connector. Spinning 90 again. Oh, I love rotating around motherboards we find a CPU fan connector. Again, we won't be using this. We haven't got a fan on this board, but if you want to add a CPU fan, there's a connector for it. And there's also here a real-time clock battery and there's an M.2 slot. And the M.2 slot is E-keyed, and so this is for fitting a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth module, as it says on the top of the slot. And 
I might do that in the future, but I don't currently have a Wi-Fi module to go into an M.2 slot. So here in this build, I'm going to be relying on a good old fashioned USB Wi-Fi dongle. Finally, on the fourth edge, we have the excitement of the main IO panel, which starts off with legacy PS2 mouse and keyboard ports. And then next to that, we've got a VGA socket, a DVI socket, and an HDMI socket for connecting the display. We've got two USB 3 ports. We've got a stack of two USB 2 ports plus gigabit ethernet. And finally, an array of analog and digital audio connectors. And so there we are. This is the ITX motherboard we're using in this silent PC build. And if you want to look underneath, we can have a look underneath if you wish. There we are, there's the underside of the board. Not a lot to note under there, but uh, I wanted to make sure I'd shown you the underside of the board. I didn't want you to think you'd missed out from not having a quick peek. Now, we don't need to add too much to this board to build a working system, but what we do need is memory and storage. And so over here, Guess what I've got? Is it a unicorn? No, it is memory and storage. Specifically, the storage is this drive. It's an SSD, it's a Samsung Evo SSD. You can't go wrong buying a Samsung Evo SSD. It's a 250 gigabyte model, which costs £44.59, and it sells for about $49.99 in the United States. The memory is a crucial kit, as you can see. This is two four gigabyte DDR4 sodiums. They're two 400 megahertz because that's the fastest speed our board will take. And they cost £35.71 for this kit, or it's about $33.95 for these in the United States at the time of making this video. So we open this up like uh, that. There we are. There's our uh, lovelier sodium modules. I just like computer components, and hopefully you do too. So, if we go back to our motherboard, we can open up the retaining clips on the side of the first sodium slot and take our sodium module, put it in uh, like that. Clips will come back into place, that's nice and secure. And then we can now go around to the second sodium slot, open up the retaining clips and uh, repeat the trick, adding in the second memory module. Thank you very much, says the computer, there we are, that's nice and secure. And lo and behold, our mini ITX motherboard is now equipped with a gigabyte of RAM. Greetings, here I am back again. And to progress this build further, we're going to need a case and a power supply. And when you're making a PC using a mini ITX board, you've got lots of options for cases because you could fit a board like this into a standard size, a very large PC case. The mounting holes will line up as will the, the back panel. But I'm going to be using here a dedicated mini ITX case, quite a small case. And specifically, I'm going to be using, just bring it in there, get rid of that safely over there. I'm going to be using this case here. And if you are a long-term viewer of this channel, and I mean a really long-term viewer of this channel, you might recognize this case because this is the case I used in my first ever PC build here on Explaining Computers all the way back in August 2010. This was put together about 10 years ago. And this case, I think is a lovely case. It's still sold, which probably says great things about the case, doesn't it? You can see it's all a well, that's, that's what it is, give it a good thump on my desk, probably not a good idea, but uh, this case is called technically a Morex 3320, and it comes with a 60 watt external power supply. There we are, that's a 12 volt, 5 amp power supply, that obviously gives us 60 watts, and it's sold currently for uh, £58.80 by miniitx.com, which is about, uh, about $75, something like that. But the main advice I would give you if you're looking for a dedicated mini ITX case is to shop around and to shop around a great deal. Because for example, I noticed on miniitx.com today, and I have nothing to do with miniitx.com, I just liked looking on their website because it's got some cool stuff on it. Anyway, I noticed they were selling a very similar case to this, the Morex 3300, for the 18 pounds, including taxes with the, the same power supply. So do look around to try and find the best mini ITX case for your build. Anyway, we need to uh, get inside this because it's still got the old motherboard I put in 10 years ago. So that's gonna come out. So I'll just empty out the case. And uh, 
here we are getting things apart. And I've just realized I must have been in within 10 years because this is not the original SSD. And uh, there we are, we've removed the uh, old motherboard. You can see it's slightly a tight fit to get everything into this case. Just need to uh, remove the uh, SSD. And uh, there we are, we have a case all clear to fit our new motherboard. And uh, I hope it's going to enjoy appearing in another video because last time it appeared on video, most of the world was still in 480p. Right, we've now got to a point where we can start putting things together. And to facilitate that, I have removed uh, this I.O. plate, which was in uh, here from the old motherboard. I have to take that out before we can fit a new motherboard. And I also forgot to talk about in my last section, power, because the power supply we've got, remember this is an external power supply. This power supply terminates in a barrel jack, which gives us 12 volts, which is great. But a modern motherboard and a mini ITX board is effectively just a modern computer motherboard requires power from a, one of these, which is a 24 pin ATX power connector, which supplies 12 volts, 5 volts, and 3.3 volts. And to allow that to happen, as you can probably see, if we just move that aside like that, in the back of this case, we have this power adapter board. And this deals with the fact we've got 12 volts in and we need multiple voltages output on a standard ATX power connector. And you'll find this type of a power adapter board in all of the very small mini ITX cases. Anyway, let's get on with the build and we'll start by taking the IO shield for the new motherboard and fitting it in the back of the case where it'll hopefully fit in like this. I hate fitting these, they never go in well for me. But hopefully I'm lucky. Go on, get in your little swine. Get in that hole and stay there. Oh, it doesn't want to, there, oh, there we are. You see, as soon as you get mad with it, it fits perfectly well, all ready for the motherboard. So if we now take the motherboard, here it is. And this is gonna go in here. These are difficult enough to get through here at the best of times and even worse in these very, very small very tight fitting cases, but hopefully we can get that in under there. There are two little grounding wires here, which you have to be very careful of, but I think that's gone in okay. So I can now fit some screws. And uh, there we are. And this uh, final screw is one that secures down a grounding wire. I'm only securing one of these grounding wires. I'm sure that'll be perfectly sufficient and difficult enough to get in and uh, there we are. Now things get really interesting because we have to get all this wiring fitted onto the board inside this case. First of all, we'll do the ATX power connector, which has to go in down here. Make sure you fit this the right way around. Or oh, getting this in is not easy, but we will get there. There we are, the board now has power. We'll worry about managing those cables in a second. Uh, we now need to also bring through all the cabling here like this. There we are, these two various things on the motherboard. One of these is front USB. One of the few disadvantages of using this older case is we don't have front USB 3, we've only got front USB 2 on this case. So all I can do is to fit the front uh, USB 2 ports like that. And I'll have to plug my USB 3 things in the back. I'm sure I can live with that. This is largely gonna be a small media PC sitting next to a television. It won't need access to lots and lots of uh, USB ports, I don't think. We next need to fit uh, a SATA cable because we're going to use that to obviously connect in our uh, SATA drive. We looked at earlier, our Evo, so I'll just plug this into SATA 1 down here. There we are. And we also need to connect the wiring. Where is it? Over here somewhere. Where's it gone? I've lost it. Where's the wiring? Oh, I haven't put it through yet. This is the wiring for the front panel, which is going to go in through here. This gives us the front LEDs for the... Uh, drive and to show the computer is on, which is important on the silent PC, and also the power switch. And these go down onto connectors all the way down there. And by the magic of filmmaking, I can show you those there, where I'm first going to connect in, I think, the power LED. And then we'll connect the drive LED, labeled here hard drive or HD LED. 
and then finally we'll connect in the jumpers for the power switch so we can turn the computer on. And uh, there we are. It's always good to have those wires connected up. And next I think we'll turn our attention to uh, this, which is our uh, SSD. So we'll go across to this bracket and our SSD fits and I think it's going to be somewhere like that. Various combinations. I think this is the one that will work best. And there we are, four screws holding in our SSD. Wouldn't want it trying to escape. So if we just go back to the PC itself, and you might notice here I've changed the SATA connector. We did have a vertical SATA connector coming up from the board here. This is now a right angle SATA connector. And the reason I've done that is because the bracket we're about to fit goes on the top of that, and a vertical SATA connector would have given us a lot of problems. So it's not very usual to put one of these right angle ones on the board, especially blocking off another port, but this is a single drive build. So in this particular instance, that doesn't matter. You have to be flexible sometimes in these small cases. And talking of flexibility, this is the front audio connector, which isn't connected to anything because this case has got a, a legacy audio connector and there's a modern HD audio connector on this board. So it's a different pinout. I could sort that out with jumpers. I can't see me using the front audio connector, so that can just stay quietly there, sitting a nice and nice and nice and restfully inside the, the case. So let's uh, bring in the SSD and first of all connect it up. There we are, it's now got power and data, and now we have to fit it into this case. This is not an easy thing to do. It takes a little bit of coaxing. But uh, there we are, we got it in. It would be good if that connector wasn't right on top of our uh, heat sink, but there's absolutely nothing we can do about it given the, uh, the layout of this case. So uh, I think I'll just put in some screws. There we are, a bit of messing around there because that one had to be a countersunk screw. So with that, I think we're basically there. If you're terribly worried about cable management, then there's not a lot you can do in this case. And in fact, if you are terribly worried about cable management, I think there's probably plenty of very good uh, therapy sessions you can uh, attend. Anyway, let's uh, put the top now on the case, pull things back together. The little thing with the switch is there, that's important. It goes on, I think, like this moment of truth and all that. That seemed rather successful, so we'll just drop in the screws. And uh, the base section goes on here, something like this. And uh, there we are, we seem to have put the computer back together. So let's just put it down over here to take a, a proper look at it. And yes, everything looks rather good indeed. Now, there comes a point in every PC build where you have to try what is technically known as seeing if it works. And so here we've got the PC connected up to a screen and to a rodent and a keyboard. So let's put some power to the monitor. Let's hit me hit monitor come on. There we are, the monitor is working. And so we can now activate the only moving part on this computer, which is the switch down there. And there we are. Oh, an LED has come on, that's a good sign. Is anything going to happen on the screen? Please, please, please. Yes! Oh look, it's gone into its uh, BIOS. And of course, there's nothing on this computer. There's no operating system on the drive. There's no applications, anything like that. So this is all we can expect to see right now. But this clearly indicates to us that uh, everything is working. We can see we've got our J4105 processor running at its base frequency of 1.5 gigahertz. We can see we've got our eight gigabytes of memory running in dual channel mode. So everything is healthy. And so I think right now the time has come for me to go and have a cup of tea and we'll bring the first part of this build series to a close. So there we are. We've built or rebuilt this compact and silent Mini ITX PC. Although I really must remember to take the Intel Atom sticker off the front. 
In next week's video, I'm going to move on to software, installing an operating system and applications. And I'll leave you to ponder just what I'm going to install. And I'll also be looking in next week's video at uh, this unit's performance and power consumption. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.